Okay, so like I said, this mainly comes from a couple of articles um, that George provided me and then also a couple of uh, SP articles that appeared last year in the uh, Southern Pacific um, Historical Society magazine. Uh, and then there's also a couple of online archives where I pulled images from. And I'll have, um, I'll have Peter post on the website um, the digitized articles and then also this presentation so that you can get the links. I'll put the links at the end uh, to the digital archives. So like I said, this is just kind of an overview of the building and the physical environment. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of interesting pictures of what was going on. Mainly, these photos are going to be uh, 60s and, and 80s um, because of the, uh, the people who took them when they were here in Austin. So there's stuff from Parker Lamb, if you guys know him. Uh, Tom Balson uh, wrote one of the articles. Um, and you know, several other people you probably know. Um, and everything's noted in the, the bottom right of the screen if you want to want to keep up with that. So. What we're talking about, just to orient you, is, uh, is Austin. And this is the SP line coming from Houston uh, and then going up to Lano and the Lano branch, which was called the Austin subdivision for Southern Pacific. Uh, it was Texas and New Orleans before that and Houston and Texas Central before that. Um, right. And there's also some Austin and Northwestern uh, trackage mixed in with that. Um, then we have the International and Great Northern Line, which became Mopac, um, running up what is now Mopac, uh, crossing the Colorado River. And then the KD Line that split off and went up through Granger and on up to Dallas. A um, little bit closer view. Uh, coming from uh, the Houston piano, uh, Austin subdivision line and the Katy line up to Waco. Uh, entering downtown Austin was Pershing Junction. Um, and you know, close by that is the, the Y. You get into the TNO Roundhouse, um, the TNO Yard and Freight House, which I'm not gonna talk any about that um, today. That's, that's kind of a, a whole nother topic. And then the Katy Yard ends up being here uh, between third and fourth streets. This is where the depots were at Third and Congress. And then uh, the International Great Northern Line that um, went on up Mopac and then across the river here. This is from the uh, State of Texas valuation map uh, for the railroads, just to kind of further orient you. Pershing Junction's here with the Y, Brown House, all the way down to Congress Avenue. And then these are just um, larger images so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, track running in Fifth Street um, on this side of I-35, which used to be called East Avenue. Um, it's where the big TNO yard was. And then it kind of swoops down onto Third Street, um, getting down into the depots. And then again, this is where um, the Katy yard was, and that's mainly what I'm going to be showing you today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you from right to left on that map from Purging Junction on in. So this is Purging Junction with uh, an SP uh, Jeep uh, that's headed into the, the track running there. You can see in the background the Sparina feed store. You buy a feed from them. Oh really? What, so yeah. we, what kind of feed did you buy? Horse feed. Horse feed? 1971. Um, you know, it's interesting that they, they said that uh, they carried some sorts of feed, but not others because at the time people grew their own. And I don't remember what it was in particular, but um, it was kind of an interesting tidbit. This is the same Persian Junction coming in. Um, if you see on the, the previous slide, uh, actually some signal indications. At one point, there was CTC control um, along this line. Uh, controlled by the SP, I believe. Um, the KD actually paid the SP to put in the CTC and run the CTC, which I thought was interesting. And here's a KD locomotive uh, in the same location. 
Uh, here we've got Waller Creek, that's where this, this bridge is. And this is Furniture Warehouse, which is um, one of the, or is the, the first building that's in the, the Katy Yard area. So this is actually 4th Street coming down here. Um, and uh, in the, the tracks take a bend. Um, but this is what it looked like in 2017. So the convention center was basically built um, on part of the, the KD yard and uh, that feed store. So this is Pershing Junction again. This is from a model railroader article from February of 1969. And, uh, and this was actually showing uh, this as what Tony Kester calls now an operational design element. Um, they were talking about using this feed store and the, the track arrangements for use in kind of a corner of the module, uh, which was interesting. Uh, but this is the, that same feed store. And, uh, and then this leads into uh, the Katie Yard. Here's a close up of that, that junction. Um, here's the switch. Katie Yard goes off this way. Here's the, here's the feed store. This is on the siding of the, of the feed store. And you can see the Sheridan Crest in. This shows up in the background of a lot of the, the images, um, just because it was kind of the, the tallest building uh, right there by the river downtown. And these photos come from um, a friend of George's, uh, Gary Phelps, who did a bunch of photography in 1981. And he said that we can also, we can post that on the, the website also um, for you guys to look at, which is nice. These are nice high resolution photos that you can zoom in on and get some nice detail. So, you know, nice detail of the, of the switch stand there. You can see how the, uh, how the track is laid um, here, just in dirt, basically. Um, and then feed store over here. And this is a reverse angle, uh, looking at the, the same feed store, of course, from the other side. Um, this, this came from uh, that Model Railroad article. And then looking at the, the main storage tanks. And again, they, they, only used, they only kept a couple of different types of feed uh, at this location. And that was just local demand. And here's a, an interesting close up. Um, this uh, plywood covered uh, trough is actually the conveyor belt. So they would pull up the, the box car, um, have a little metal chute that went down into the conveyor here, and that would come along here and go up the elevator to be stored in the tanks. That's a neat little, little detail shot. And then their, um, their delivery platform had some, uh, some nice wheel stops on it. Interesting. And something he pointed out in the article is that um, there, there was a, a nice path that was worn just alongside the tracks uh, all the way down here. Um, but the tracks are basically just, um, you know, the ties are buried in the dirt there. Um, and we'll see some more details of the track later on as well. So you see, a, looks like a CNO boxcar, Norfolk and Western. Um, so we got some interesting rolling stock here in town. So right past that is where, um, oh, we're over here. Um, this is the, the Katy Yard. So the feed company that we're looking at was right here coming from, from Pershing, that furniture warehouse. And then there also was a Miller beer distributor. Uh, this capital paper stock collected um, uh, basically recycled paper, uh, old paper, um, which was interesting recycling way back then. Uh, this was the Katie office and their freight shed. And then printing company, um, which was something else before, uh, auto parts warehouse, electric supply, which was actually Sunshine Biscuit Company um, back in the 50s, and then Austin Warehouse, and then a, a hardware distributor. So we're gonna take a look at the, the Katie office. Uh, this is from uh, prototype 
modeler. Um, so Jim Hickey photo from 1983 issue showing the KD office here. And then this was, um, was the San Marcos local coming up the, the Mopac um, across the bridge, the Colorado coming up the Mopac line there. And there was a Derek um, right next to it. Oops. In this photo, there's a little close up of it. Taken by Cyril Durnberger. And then the interesting thing about the, the KD freight office uh, was that it was a private house or a private residence before. And um, in the article mentioned that it was probably, um, it was probably a brothel um, before the Katie got a hold of it. But in its day, it was, it was a really nice house. Um, it does show up on the Sanborn maps, um, you know, dating back, I think, to, to the late 1800s, um, early 1900s. Can't remember which map it was on. Um, but it was actually kind of a, a nice house. Just another view of it. They started boarding up windows when they were less and less busy and weren't using those offices. And they pointed out in the article that you could see basically any sort of equipment that the Katie had. Um, it would show up here in Austin, which of course is really fantastic for, for modelers. And this is looking at the, the, the freight shed um, that was attached to it. And just for reference, this is the American Bank building that was built in 1973 and 74 which was really a landmark um, building and time for Austin. Um, this is when Austin started to, to have visions of grandeur and that was, that was quite a building to go up. It was, it was all gold, um, reflective glass. Um, very shocking for, for here in Austin, uh, especially compared to what was going on in the rail yards. So here we're actually, um, back on the other side of the yard. And this is the furniture warehouse uh, that we saw before. There's the, the tank or the American bank um, and the Miller beer distributor. But some nice details in here, this little uh, low signal uh, or low switch stand. And this was a, a way bill box um, for interchange between SP and, and Katie. So let's look at everything that was, was in the yard now. So moving in, you get a better, better view of Miller Beer, uh, Capital Paper Stock Company, and then that's where the, where the freight house is. Some interesting notes modeling wise, uh, they put timber stringers uh, alongside the, the tracks whenever they were in the road. Um, and the rails were set just a little bit higher than that because it was better for cars to have a little bump up than it was to have a little bump down. So they're just barely above pavement height, or at least we're supposed to be. Again, this was in 1981. There wasn't a whole lot of traffic going on there anymore. Previously, almost all of those, those buildings had rail service. Um, there, are, there are very lively customers in there. They talked about um, capital paper here of having cars, uh, you know, two tracks deep there most of the time. There's a lot of activity going on. And then, of course, with trucking and everything, it, it just kind of slowly tapered off uh, until they closed up shop. So, looking back the other way, here's the furniture warehouse, Miller Beer, capital paper, a PFE car. And here, um, you know, it looks like the asphalt's coming right up to the, uh, to the rails in this picture later on. Um, the city of Austin, at one point, you know, started pulling up rails in the streets to, to alleviate those, those issues. You can see the, 
the track detail, the roadbed here is basically just packed gravel. Um, so it's just kind of one continuous gravel surface over a lot of the yard, uh, except at the points, of course, that you can see the ties there. And the, the SP uh, was actually contracted by the KD to do all the KD switching there. So the local, this is the, that local we saw before coming in from San Marcos, uh, would pull in and um, uh, get the orders and the, the SP engine would actually do the switching of, uh, of the yard for them. And then they would just hook up and continue on. This is the Miller beer distributorship. Um, early on, there was a lot more traffic than, than later on, of course. Um, so there would be boxcars from uh, Milwaukee down here. Close up of all the trash and, and interesting little details along the Capitol Ticket Park building. And then on the other side, you had the auto parts warehouse um, with a long, long loading dock there. Um, again, this was Sunshine Biscuit Company in the, the early 1950s, and then it became Blonde Electric. Uh, Blonde was not a rail customer, but Sunshine Biscuit was. And here's the Austin warehouse. And um, in the article, they said that um, they didn't have rail service, um, although they had these nice loading docks. And here's the furniture warehouse. This was used, um, uh, well, actually earlier on, it was a lumber company. Um, and then uh, furniture warehouse and uh, lots of traffic there. And this is usually where you would find the, uh, the locomotives parked in front of it. There's a Jeep 7, which I think in the article they called a Jeep 9, but my quick research on the internet showed that this was actually a Jeep 7. It's an old mogul from the 1950s. They had two 6 O's and two 8 O's operating in the yard. Then here's another look at the low level switch stand, the interchange waybill box, and then there's a, a derail sign. You can see that vertical there. So now let's look on the, the outside of that card in the street running. And this is the SP track. Um, and if you note the, the timbers that are lining the rails here. And this is the back of the KD yard. This is the printing company at this point in the 80s, which uh, did, not, um, did not have rail service. Uh, but before it was an auto dealer that had the uh, nice bright yellow KD double door automobile box cars, which would be nice. And then the auto parts warehouse Bond Electric and some warehouse company. And here's a shot of uh, laying track in the in the street. Um, not sure what these bombs are for, uh, but they uh, they prepared the sub road bed, laid the ties, and then um, and then here's the timber stringers going in next to the rails. Some more street shots. This is the SP track going down to Congress uh, and to the stations down there that both the, the Katy and um, the SP used. And then across the street was the MP station. Here's the hardware distributor. This is the 1920 shot. And if you notice this tree right here, the 1920 shot, and there's still a tree there, 1980s.
a little bit different. Oh, yeah. Then moving down the line to the International and Great Northern Station, this was, um, I believe, the first station that was there. Um, if not the first, it was one of the one of the first. And I'm guessing this is at Third and Congress, where their later station was to be. And I should have said at any point, if anybody has information that they want to throw in here, just just jump in and, and throw it in. Uh, Riley, I believe that building is uh, was the Carmelo's restaurant, which is still oh. there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was. There's there's something about that. Um, it may have been the first stone building in town, or there's there's some there's some first for that as well. So that's yeah. over Red River and Fifth, then, right? Yeah, so this this will be Fifth Street, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to check into that. And this is really blurry, but this says International, Great Northern, is a locomotive, and train, uh, ticket office. Then here's the uh, the really cool station. And this is at the southwest corner of the Congress. It's beautiful. Then here's what the Missouri Pacific did to it later on. I couldn't find any images quickly of the, um, of the station kind of in between these times. Um, so that might be interesting if anybody has a line on those. And then uh, across the street was the Houston and Texas Central Depot. The nice uh, tower and, and dome. And at this point, it, it was the Houston and Texas Central. And then Southern Pacific took them over. And this actually has an addition too on the back. Oh, addition on the back uh, and a lengthened um, platform. Here's a shot of a train that um, actually went up to Washington, D.C. Um, I can't remember what that was for. Shot from a reverse angle from the platform and train number 42. Then the Caney also used this as their station and took their orders and um, and passengers on here. So the the Katie and the SP had a really close relationship here in Austin um, with trackage rights, with sharing depot, with having the switcher do their work. Kind of an interesting situation that. Um, would probably be interesting getting deeper into, especially when we start our, when we start operating. And then just kind of for context, um, not far away, the trolley system uh, along First Street. This is Peace Elementary. And here's Congress. This was the last day that the trolleys ran and the buses were taking over. So quite an event. Then here's some more track laying. I haven't figured out exactly where this is yet, um, but C.B. Moreland was a, a district judge here in Austin. Um, I just, I need to go to the directories to, to find out which street this is. I'm assuming it's trolley lines in Congress, but I don't know, this is, this is in the 1890s at some point. And this is definitely in Congress, looking back to third in Congress with the moon tower and the SP station that's there. These buildings are, well, the Eiler, this, this building's still here. Um, I haven't been downtown this week, so I don't know if the rest are still there or not. 
I'm going to close up. Back here in the distance, I'm, I'm not sure what that is. That, that may be the school for the deaf across the, the river. And then really faintly back here, uh, this is probably St. Edwards. So moving on from the depot, here's the, the SP depot and the MP depot. And um, we're near the Shoal Creek Bridge looking back towards Congress. Close up for that. So kind of interesting with the, uh, I don't know if that's just like, I guess that's just a curb uh, running along either side. Riley, are those signals hanging over? Um, that's a good question. It, 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 it must be. Um, on this website, I think this came from the, the, the Bering uh, Barringer archives. Um, somebody was asking that question, but it was never answered. And then further on down Third Street in Colorado, this is in the 80s. This is my main memory of, of this area was just emptiness. And then fourth and Oasis, the SP tracks. Um, and I don't know exactly where the SP trackage ended and the IGN or Mopac track started. Hadn't gotten that far yet. And there's another, another moon tower there. Another moon tower, yep. And um, we we're talking with Pedro who, um, has a, a module or two downtown, and he's looking at Moon Tower um, uh, 3D models to have printed. So we'll have we'll have two or three of those on the layout, which of course is very distinctive. Riley, is anybody recording this presentation? Yes. Oh. Thank you. Then I will, I will say another disclaimer that I'm not an expert on any of this. Um, this is just stuff that I've gathered this past week. So um, I, I think if anybody wants to dig in further, Gerald said that he was, he was digging into things. Um, just uh, gather up the information and share when you get it. Like I said, I didn't do a whole lot on, on the, the Missouri Pacific. Um, I think that's a whole nother presentation, but here's their, their freight station at uh, Third and Lavaca. And there was some piggyback service there. And then moving west uh, down to the Colorado River Bridge and uh, the Y interchange between the IGN and the SP and, and Katy, uh, the power plant was right adjacent to it. And then the city of Austin had a big material yard there um, for ages, ages and ages. I remember seeing all the dust and everything all the, all the time. And here's an interlocking diagram, which I assume was made because uh, for evidence in, in an accident, uh, there was some accident that happened on, on the, uh, the IGN side of, of the Y there. And there was a tower number, 205 tower uh, that was right in the center that controlled this interlocking. And you can see this going to San Antonio, to Taylor, and down to Austin. Um, they had some pretty serious signaling going on there as well to cover that intersection. And here you can see the signals. This is from um, I'm guessing this is actually from early 1930s, uh, based on the buildings in the other photos that came from the same collection, assuming that he only made one trip down here. Uh, so this is looking east, and the, the bridge is to the right, um, the Austin, City of Austin Materials Yard uh, over here on the left. And a close up of that. 
So the tower is going to be somewhere, somewhere in here, probably behind this little shanty. Here's later on, 1978. You can see the city of Austin materials yard. Looks like it's still active then. And there's the Sheridan Crest in. These are the smokestacks for the uh, power plant. Don't remember the date of the power plant. It was, it was I think, late 30s. Um, I have to check on that for sure. But in the previous photograph, these are different um, smokestacks. I don't know if anybody can identify that may be like a little F2 or something in the yard. It was called Sun Lake Yard, run by the Mopac. Then here's a, a, the Katy, Texas special coming from downtown headed towards San Antonio. And then the other leg of that Y is a Missouri Pacific train headed across the, the bridge. And this warehouse in the background, uh, I only remember it as a Goodwill uh, building. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it was before that, if anybody else remembers. Then here are some interesting pictures uh, of the bridge and the tower. So again, this is Tower 205. And this is sometime before 1934. Um, it was labeled in the archive as 1930s or 1940s, but I was able to identify this, the building in the background there. Um, close up of the tower. Neat little, little building. And from this photograph, I could tell this was UT's old main building, which was, um, was torn down in 1934 and replaced with the tower. So you can see the bridge with uh, the different segments of the girders going across the river. And then this is the, uh, the east side of that Y. Um, where, where the signal bridge was shown in the interlocking diagram of um, a couple of Missouri Pacific trains, uh, passenger train and freight trains. Then this was sort of interesting too. Um, and there was a, a little hint of what might be going on here uh, with the, the Katy train and a, a Mopac train at the Mopac, the new Mopac station which is where the Amtrak station is right now, Lamar Boulevard being right here, um, that it, it sounded like they would pull in to the station, um, you know, whether they're going north or south, and then back up and continue on, um, on their journey. So that would be something interesting to, to research. And this was in 1965. Fantastic sun, neon lit at night. It's a great 3D modeling project. And then the new Mopac station, which is now Amtrak. This was the last passenger train that Mopac ran coming, coming through Austin. And then you can see the Tips Iron building um, in the background. And then here's the cut just to the west of that building, this train is headed into, uh, into the station in downtown. Um, but just to kind of give you an indication of, um, you know, here in 1964, um, this was of course pre-MOPAC, which came along in the late 70s, I believe, early 80s. Um, you know, kind of the, the roughness of, of what was going on um, even into the 60s, basically in downtown Austin. So I've included some links to these different collections. Um, 
there are valuation maps of the National Archive, which I couldn't find any. Um, well, there's something here for Austin. Um, I couldn't find um, anything further than what, what was in the articles uh, that was pulled out. Um, those were actually state of Texas valuation maps. So those might be at the state archives. I went through, um, went through their online website and it's not online. So it may be something you have to go physically find. And then the nice 1930s and 40s photos was from the, the Barringer photo collection. There's a Flickr site that has all of those. Um, it's not just Austin, but it's stuff from all over the country if you have interest in, in other railroads. And then Portal of Texas History um, is where all of the Austin History Center photos um, are, uh, are available online. Um, and that's a real, real great resource. A lot of the photos came from there. And then uh, Parker Lamb, sorry for the typo. Um, uh, most of you probably know him or know of him. Uh, his photos are, are now online as well. And he took photos from all across the country. Uh, some really nice black and white photography there. And then there's a Texas Railroad History um, website that had some information on Tower 205. And um, so I found a couple of those photos as well. So that's what I found out in a few days this past week uh, about what was going on, again, mainly with the Katy. But I would encourage everybody to, uh, who has interest in, in the MOPAC and the TNO stuff, uh, as you're gathering those resources, put together a presentation and, and share what you're finding on, on that stuff as well. So that's that presentation. Um, you're welcome to ask questions. I don't think I can answer them, but you're welcome to ask them and maybe somebody else can answer them. <laughs>